what is the reason behind all of this brutality in the name of islam because you know in the international world this thing is kind of really unheard of that someone would kill someone stab someone for blasphemy or shoot someone for blasphemy but in pakistan this happens every day pakistan in pakistan there is a law the 295 b and c of pakistani penal code both prescribe death penalty for people who defile a copy of quran 295 b if you defile a copy of quran you burn it you you know you disrespect it in any other way you can you know you can be pun- sentenced to death uh, sentenced to death and punished uh, you can be up for life imprisonment as well and that is something that happens in pakistan all the time so what we see in pakistan is that uh, there are a lot of people who are in jails for blasphemy and blasphemy is an is a non bailable offense in pakistan let's say anyone who is accused or alleged of blasphemy uh, he's arrested that person will never get a bail and when they don't get a bail what happens next is that you know uh, they do get life imprisonments and they do get death penalties and uh, during the recent years death plan penalty has been the more popular choice by the judges and the courts and there are hundreds of people who are on death row because of blasphemy in pakistan right now so jails in rawalpindi lahore and karachi are there are tens of people there maybe hundreds of people there who are uh, who have been jailed who cannot have bails because they are alleged of blasphemy and blasphemy in pakistan is a very very different kind of crime most of the people who are alleged of blasphemy are disproportionately pakistani religious minorities huge uh, christians ahmadis and hindus are the biggest targets of the pakistani blasphemy law and uh, any altercation any conflict with a muslim can turn out to be an allegation of blasphemy because the blasphemy law has been used time and again for personal gains and to you know seek personal vendetta against a person who is not a muslim in pakistan it has happened repeatedly it continues to happen today even yesterday a, a man was mob lynched in uh, 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 an ahmadi muslim was mob lynched in sindh province of pakistan not stabbed in sindh province of pakistan and he was not lucky enough he did not survive thankfully salman rushdi did survive but that man did not survive that unlucky fellow lost his life a few months back there was another guy uh, who was killed and that also happened in sindh uh, that happened in south punjab and uh, last year another youth uh, his name was vakas he was also uh, uh, stabbed and gutted by a by a muslim man uh, on the allegation of blasphemy so this has been happening now anyone who exposes himself as an atheist in pakistan is at risk of being mob lynched stabbed booked for blasphemy blackmailed any and you name it and anything can happen to an atheist in pakistan the number of atheists though is rising still in pakistan but this is the state of affairs that is happening on the ground right now but why this happens is also also uh, a point of concern why do muslims take the issue of blasphemy so seriously so this is related to what i was talking about already the islamic history books are filled with so many things that were done by prophet muhammad who is the most sacred personality in islam he's more he's more sacred he's more holy than than jesus or moses muslims do believe in them even muhammad i would say prophet muhammad is holier than allah himself because if you if you curse allah you say okay allah is allah is a dog no one would you know will care give two asses about that but let's say you say the same words for muhammad you know you have a target on your back you have a risk of being mob lynched let's say there is a paper on which the word muhammad is written and you just happen to throw it on the floor 
or by mistake it slips out of your hands and for, for, of your hand and falls onto the ground you know you are up for an allegation of blasphemy this is what happened to priyantha kumara who was a sri lankan expat working in the you know uh, in a city in punjab named sialkot so he was working there he was working for an international company he was a quality controller who uh, used to inspect the goods that were being prepared or manufactured in that sports goods factory in pakistan so those people were not very happy with him and allegedly there was this one praise for prophet muhammad durood written on a paper that was on on a placard or something that was pasted on a wall and he removed it and he put it somewhere else and because of this they said okay this this guy has committed blasphemy and he uh, or the workers of the factory gathered they mob lynched him they killed him and then they burned his body so this is what happened so why do muslims do that because the very personality of the prophet is so hard to understand for a from for a non muslim when he sees that okay how come a prophet kills kills children how come a prophet marries a 6 year old how come a prophet has slave women how can he allow rape of war captives how why is he looting caravans so when non muslims or even some muslim or even an atheist asks these questions this is an automatic blasphemy because the muslims think okay the intention behind such a thing though it is written in their books they think that the intention behind these things is to insult their prophet but the problem is it is not only the issue that it is only written in their books all around the world you can see muslim men even today in afghanistan and even in pakistan and some other countries in the islamic world marrying 6 year old girls even today so the kind of example that prophet muhammad sets is still followed in some countries around the world because of which it creates a human right crisis a situation that w- could have been averted if islam was not connected to it so a few years back a mulla or a man in pakistan was arrested for trying to marry a 7 year old girl and when a journalist went and interviewed him on live television and she asked him how can you think of marrying a 7 year old girl so the answer of that mulla was how can you blame me for that because our prophet also did that so that is the problem how can you blame muslims without discussing what the prophet had already done how can they would never accept blame for anything that the prophet had already done and they think that the prophet was the pinnacle of moral responsibility in the world how can you say that taliban should not stone people to death when prophet muhammad had personally done it when he had stoned people with his own hands when he had lashed people with his, with his own hands when he has distributed slave girls among his warriors with his own hands when he had sexually used and abused women who were captured during wars you know how can you blame isis or boko haram or the taliban for doing the same but when you say that prophet muhammad did that and it's a it's a horrible thing you know it, it, this is what these people consider as blasphemy so according to our modern moral standards today we can never we can never say that prophet but prophet muhammad did was correct in any way and we are we are forced to criticize him because we cannot see the same horrible atrocities that he did 1400 years ago happen today so when we do that when we try to stand against these horrible things then automatically it's a blasphemy against prophet muhammad and the muslims even they also know in their hearts that what prophet did was wrong 
but they don't want you to talk about it that's why these blasphemy laws exist in pakistan in, in islam because if these laws did not exist you know islam would just cease to exist because the criticism would just kill islam it would just make prophet muhammad into an evil evil dictator and maybe the satan himself so that's why it's 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 very important for the, these muslims to silence anyone who is criticizing islam so that's why the blasphemy laws exist in islam because if there were no bl- blasphemy laws because of the verbal assault and the criticism that was going on against islam not now even at the time of the prophet even it wouldn't have been possible for muslims to defend the prophet and islam against that verbal assault and that that moral critique that would have been done even in the earliest days of islam so prophet muhammad anyone who said that prophet is a liar and quran is a false book and muhammad is inventing this this book the, all those people were killed by him at the hands of his companions at the hands of his thugs so he's just a villain i would say he's just a villain and he is he's one of the worst villains in the world i can say so that's why they want you to be silent about him because if you start speaking about him you are going to destroy his character destroy his evil character that's why they don't want you to do that and that's why it's more important to do that that's why we are going to keep doing that so